assalamu alaikum everyone uh, dear student this is lecture 3 uh, we were on depreciation before the namaz break i believe it's here so simply now we can discuss the depreciation rule what it says another important point depreciation starts as soon as your asset is available for use and once you have started depreciating the asset even after one year two year the asset is idle you are not using it still you have to depreciate the asset because it has a useful life and within the useful life we need to depreciate the asset so simply depreciation begins as soon as asset is available for use is ready to use the key principle with regard depreciation are as follows all property plan and equipment with a finite useful life means specific uh, life must be depreciated the depreciated depreciable amount of an asset is the cost less residual value residual value is an estimate of net selling proceed if the asset was at the end of its useful life simply scrap value is the estimated sale proceed at the end of useful life of the asset depreciation is charged to the statement of profit loss unless it is included in a carrying amount of another asset what do you mean by this for example we are using one plant in constructing the building repeat we are using a plant to construct the building so now the depreciation of the plant to be added in the carrying amount of the building you cannot expense out the depreciation of the plant so repeat we are using a plant to build to construct the building so now the depreciation of that plant is added to the carrying amount of the building depreciation begins when the asset is available for use and continues until the asset is derecognized derecognized means you have let's say sold the asset even if it is idle so one once your asset is uh, available for use you will start depreciating the asset until it is derecognized let's say until it is sold even if it is idle still you have to depreciate the asset depreciation must be allocated on a systematic basis i did explain systematic basis in class 2 reflecting the pattern in which assets future economic benefits are expected to be consumed in practice many entities depreciate property plan and equipment on a straight line basis over its estimated useful life okay in practice they are doing but that's not necessary the main thing is the depreciation method should match with the pattern of economic benefit depreciation method based on revenue generated by an activity are not appropriate for example this is not acceptable under i16 that you are depreciating the asset according to the revenue generated it means in year 1 if you have generated more revenue you will be depreciating there will be a more depreciation expense in the second year if there is a less depreciation you will be depreciating less in the third year again you are having a more revenue so you will be depreciating more such depreciation method is not acceptable depreciation method based on revenue generated by an activity are not appropriate this is based this is because revenue reflects many factors such as inflation sale prices sales volume rather than economic consumption of an asset the depreciation method residual value and useful life of an asset should be reviewed annually and revised if necessary any adjustment are assumed for a change in accounting estimates so the useful life depreciation method scrap value all should be re reviewed annually and if necessary then you have to change and change is treated as change in estimates now let's discuss what is this componentization uh simply if i explain componentization uh let's say if i talk about an aeroplane okay if we talk about an aeroplane so simply we can say that uh you cannot depreciate the aero entire aeroplane by just using uh same life for the entire aeroplane why because if i break that l aeroplane into different components so each component will be having a different useful life for example the uh, if i talk about the interior structure of the aeroplane that will have a different useful life exterior structure of the of the aeroplane will have a different useful life cabin fittings they will have a different useful life so the simply componentization means where uh each component is having a different useful life so they will be simply depreciated over their useful life 
they should be depreciated over their useful life. Another concept, okay, let some parts of an asset may be require regular replacement. For example, seats in an aero aircraft, the replacement should be capitalized. The new seat will be capitalized and the old one will be simply derecognized. The old one will be derecognized. Look at this one is important. Some assets such as aircraft can only be operated if regular inspection for faults are carried out. Now listen. There are actually two types of inspections. If there is a major inspection, if there is a major inspection, logically the major inspection is capitalized. Major inspection is capitalized. Now the question is what do you mean by major inspection? For example, your examiner says that after every two years, your company will have to carry out the major inspections and you will be incurring, let's say, somewhere uh, $1 million or maybe $2 million. So that is called basically a major inspection. That is, repeat, if there is a major inspection then you have to capitalize but if there is a routine inspection if there is a routine inspection simply the routine inspection it needs to be expensed out for example every aeroplane before flying we there is a routine inspection that is expense out after landing we do inspect but that is a routine inspection so simple concept is routine inspection is expense out and the major inspection you need to capitalize so some assets such as aero, uh, aircraft can only be operated for regular inspection for a fault for, for inspection i have uh, give you the concept major inspection capitalized routine inspection expense out the cost of these inspection can be capitalized but Please, again, I'm repeating again and again, major inspection, capitalized, routine inspection, expense out. Any remaining carrying amount relating to the previous inspection should be derecognized. Obviously, if your examiner says uh, aircraft needs to be, uh, needs to go for major inspection, let's say after every three years, and you will be incurring somewhere, let's say, $10 million. So, logically, this $10 million will be uh, depreciated over three years' life. And when the asset goes for the new major inspection then the previous major inspection which we have capitalized that has to be now derecognized so if i make it very simple you just need to remember two lines in in, in fact three lines one routine inspection expense out major inspection capitalize then Third one is depreciation should be charged separately on each significant component part of an item of property plan and equipment. Parts which have the same useful life can be grouped together. If your asset is a combination of number of components where each component is having a different useful life, then you have to depreciate each component separately over their useful life. But if two or more components are having same useful life, then those components can be grouped together and depreciate on a same useful life. Now let's talk about derecognition. Obviously, once you have sold the asset, so you have to derecognize the asset. IE 16 says that an asset should be derecognized when disposal occurs, or if no further economic benefit are expected from the asset use or disposal. The gain or loss of derecognition of asset is the difference between the net sale proceed, if any, and carrying amount of the asset. Like I think in uh, lecture two we did, the, I did make one double entry. The carrying amount was 120 million. We sold it for 125, so there was a gain of five. When a revalued asset is disposed of, any revaluation surplus may be transferred directly to retain earning, or it may be left in revaluation surplus within other component of equity. I did discuss many times in lecture two when you are selling the asset and it has, and carrying amount is having the effect of revaluation surplus as well. You can, if you want, you can close that revaluation surplus to retain earning. Simply, you cannot recycle that 
revaluation to profit and loss. But if you don't want to close the revaluation surplus at disposal to retain earning, you can leave it in with an other component of equity. Now let's talk about disclosures. IA 16 re requires entities to disclose. Measurement basis means simply uh, are you carrying your asset at cost model or revaluation model, useful life and depreciation methods, reconciliation of carrying amount at the beginning and end of the period. So you need to show the reconciliation as well. Uh, let's say at the start of the year you had 200 million asset, at the end you are having 3 million asset. Uh, so how did you get this 1 million difference? Obviously, so what you have to do, take the opening asset deduct the depreciation add the new addition and again deduct is there if there is a depreciate any depreciation on addition also deduct this carrying amount of the disposal asset so you will get the closing amount so reconciliation means simply we need a calculation in which we show that what uh, the amount of the opening asset and the amount of the closing asset and you show the reason of the difference what would be the reason of difference if I am having the opening property plan and equipment 200 and the closing 300 so obviously you will be getting somewhere depreciation additions and disposals depreciation will be deducted additions will be added and disposal will be deducted so simply this sort of calculation is called reconciliation but don't worry in SBI nobody is asking us to show the reconciliation if items of property plan and equipment are stated as revalued amounts, information about the revaluation should also be disclosed. Then you need to give us the information relating to uh, revaluation as well. Now let us discuss this question. Question 1 Cap, name of a company, bought a building on 111. The purchase price was 2.9 million. Associated legal fee 0 0.9 million. 1 million. Now, what it says, explain how the above items of property plan and equipment would have been accounted for in all the relevant reporting periods till 31st number X5. Okay. Five years. Number one, obviously the purchase price is capitalized plus associated legal fee will be capitalized. So 2.9 million is your asset. We need to add 0 0.1 million as well. Cap also paid sales tax of 0 0.5 million, which was recovered from the tax authorities. Very important point. This 0 0.5 million is a refundable tax. You have paid the tax while buying this, uh, let's say, building. Since it is a refundable, since it is a refundable tax, so refundable taxes cannot be capitalized. So 0 0.5 million, this 0 0.5 million cannot become a part of your asset because it is a refundable tax, which means there is a concept. The concept is what if the tax uh, was non-refundable? Non-refundable taxes are capitalized. So if you have paid the tax while buying the asset and such a tax is non-refundable. So simply you will be capitalizing the non-refundable tax. But refundable taxes cannot be capitalized. The building was attributed a useful life of 50 years. Okay. It was revalued to 4.6 million on December X4. After 4 years they have revalued it. And sold it for 5 million on December X5. Now listen. Well, I'm just uh, telling you the answer plan of question one. What do you have to write? It's not a proper answer, it's just an answer plan. I want you to write in your own words. Just answer plan. First, you have to tell your examiner that 2.9 million will be capitalized, the legal fee will be capitalized, but the sale tax of 0 0.5 million will not be capitalized because it is refundable, which means that. The building is having cost of three million dollar and useful life is 50 years okay at the end of year four they are revaluing the asset which means 
in 2000x1, 2000x2, 2000x3, and obviously 2000x4. What is the depreciation expense? 3 divided by 50. 3 divided by every year, you are getting a depreciation. There is a depreciation expense of 0 0.06. Straight line method. You will get same depreciation every year. It means the carrying amount of building at December X4. 3 minus 0 0.06 into 4. It is 2.76. The carrying amount of the building is 2.76 and the revalued amount which examiner has given us that is 4.6. Which means there is a revaluation surplus. Four point six minus two point seven six. Let's see what is the re amount of revaluation surplus. The amount of revaluation surplus is one point eight four. So what will be the double entry of this? I'm just explaining you that there's no need to make double entries in SBR until and unless you have asked to do so. Simply you can say building or property plant. You need to debit with one point eight four. December X4 revaluation slash other com comprehensive income in SFP we write other component of equity simply building is debited revaluations slash OCI OC is credited now after revaluation you need to depreciate asset on its remaining life after Revaluation building is depreciated over its remaining useful life, which is 46 years. Why 46? Because till December X for four years. They have go, they are gold. You are left with only 46 years. It means 2000x5. If I talk about depreciation expense, the revalued amount is 4.6. You will be depreciating 4.6 over the remaining life. 0 0.1 million. You will be depreciating. Uh, the building over the remaining life. Now let's read the question. Let's say so. December X5, we have sold this building for 5 million. Okay. You have sold this building for 5 million. December, you have sold this building for uh, 5 million. Okay. Which means, look at this. If I talk about the carrying amount of the building, carrying amount of the building, 4.6 minus 0 0.5. The building which is having a carrying amount of 4.5 million, you have sold this building for 5 million. Sold for 5 million. So logically, there is a gain on disposal of 0 0.5. Gain on disposal 0 0.5 million and this 0 0.5 million goes to profit and loss. Just for your explanation, dear students, for your understanding, in fact, I'm making this double entry which is not required again in exam. I'm debiting the bank with 5 million. The previous revaluation surplus. OC other component of equity 1.84 debit. Previous revaluation surplus, if you want, you can close it to retain earning. 
you can close this into retainer buildings building is having carrying amount 4.5 gain on disposal which comes in PNL is 0 0.5 million gain on disposal okay what else do we have car purchase Oh, sorry, cap purchase a machine on 11X3 for 1 lakh. Attributed it to with a useful life of 10 years. Which means depreciation comes 10,000 every year. On January X5, cap reduced the estimated remaining useful life to 4 years. Change in life. Change in useful life is change in estimate. And change in estimate is applied prospectively. So, what to do? Uh, simply we have to take let me explain number one you need to explain that change of uh, useful life is change in estimate and change in estimate is applied prospectively so in 2000 x3 in 2000 x4 simply one lakh divided by 10,000 10 every year you are getting a depreciation of 10,000 it means start of 11 x5 machine is having carrying amount of 80,000 why 80,000 because initially machine had a cost of 1 lakh and from 1 lakh if I deduct depreciation of 20,000 so I'll be getting 80,000. So in 2000 x5 we'll be depreciating this 80,000 over 4 years. So let me again show you the answer plan. Simply 2000 x3 depreciation expense of machine. 1 lakh divided by 10 it gives me 10,000 depreciation expense 2000 x4 of machine again same it is 10,000 the net book value another name is carrying amount of machine it's the same thing on December x4 1 lakh Minus this 10 and 10, 20,000. So on this date, now in 2000, start of 2000 x5, the company is saying the remaining useful life is just 4 years. So change in useful life is change in estimate. So what do we have to do? The change is coming on 11 x5. And now they are saying uh, basically. Useful life is only 4 years. What we have to do? You need to depreciate this 80,000 over remaining life which is 4 years. So depreciation expense for 2000 x5. 80,000 divided by 4. This 20,000. What I have done dear student for you, uh, for my students in order to make it more simple. I have given this answer of question 1 as well which I have properly explained. So I want every one of you to go through this answer. Obviously, nobody is expecting, I am not expecting any one of my students to write exactly what is written over here, the detail and the quality. But the main things should be same. Main things should be same. Look at this, the depreciation every year is 0 0.06. As building is 3 million and we have capitalized 2.9 and 0 0.1 million only. Look at the revaluation surplus is 1.84. Gain on disposal. Gain on disposal is 0 0.5. If you want, you can simply debit other component of equity, retain earning at disposal. Other component of equity, this is basically OC. Now look at this machine. 2003 and 4, the depreciation is 10,000, and 2005, the depreciation is 20,000. So, I really want every one of you to go through this answer at least twice. If you find any, inshallah, you will not be finding any problem at all. But must, must read this answer at least once. At least once. So, dear student, in the next class, what I'm going to do, what I'm going to do, in the next class, what I'll be doing, 
inshallah in the next class i'll be discussing little bit more there will be little bit more discussion on is 16 including uh, maybe one or two questions plus in addition to that in the next class which is going to be class 4 uh, there will be a little revision of is is 16 as well after completion of every is i'll give you a revision as well so the last video on the lecture will have the revision also short revision so in lecture 4 what i'm going to do uh, i'll be discussing at least one otherwise two questions on is 16 and plus there will be a revision in is 16 so uh, at the end of each is ifrs you'll be getting a revision as well so dear student all you need is just strictly follow my notes and my lectures during my lectures i'll keep guiding you how to prepare what to do but till here you just need to focus on the lectures so thank you very much for watching this lecture have a nice life